Mr Benke. Thank, thank you, Sarah, and good morning, everybody. And uh, before I start, I just want to say thank you to all of the people that took the time to fill in uh, the Google documents. It's a really rich repository of experiences and uh, from across member states. Um, I think the, the common theme throughout is that uh, we're all on a journey. Some are earlier on in the, in the journey and others are more advanced. But uh, I think over the course of the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, I think we need to bear in mind, look, there is no such thing as a very basic question or a stupid question in relation to ACUS because we are all learning and, uh, uh, as I said, at different stages. So um, our thanks to the 59 uh, respondents uh, representing 26 countries across uh, the EU. Um, uh, we had a fairly uh, even break uh, down of, of respondents, and uh, this is my just a, a rough categorization of, of the different people that participated in. Uh, we had a, a very strong response there from uh, private advisory uh, uh, managing authorities and AGIS coordination bodies. Uh, there was a question uh, that you were asked about the, uh, how the ACUS is coordinated in your country, and the vast majority of people uh, uh, noted that it was the managing authority that was really leading the charge in relation to the, the ACUS coordination. Um, and you can see the other, uh, the other uh, elements are, are all some version of the, the, the managing authority uh, being involved along the way. So. Um, to get stuck into the questions, and um, I promise you I, I won't take too long, but, uh, and I, I do apologize for the text-rich slides, but I think uh, it's probably the best way to do it. Uh, so the question was how uh, the ACUS uh, is coordinated in your country, and where is the formal ACUS coordination body, as mentioned in your CAP plan, located? So overall, the responses highlighted the need for improved coordination and integration of ACUS activities at both national and regional levels to foster innovation and knowledge exchange in the agri-food sector. So that's a given. Um, a lot of you uh, did note that um, the ACUS is quite fragmented in your country um, and uh, with some uh, of the countries uh, having a regional uh, uh, structure uh, where multiple ACUS coordination bodies will be required or a version or sub, sub entities of the ACUS coordination would be uh, uh, required. So several countries have a fragmented and diverse ACUS landscape with different regions and ministries or ministries taking responsibility for specific uh, aspects of ACUS. Um, and then which actors are involved in the ACUS coordination and how do, you, do these, inter, these actors interact with each other? Um, are there new structures in place? So, uh, again, this is a very much a summary of, of, of your responses. Uh, the formal coordination body for the ACUS has not been established in most cases. Uh, this indicates that the coordination of ACUS is still in its early stages or undergoing uh, development. So that goes back to my original point, uh, is that uh, we're all on a journey and some are uh, at the earlier stages of that journey. And that's okay. Uh, it's, this is what this event is about, is sharing and learning from uh, others who uh, maybe have, uh, are a little bit further along that, that journey. In general, the managing authority are working uh, through different working groups, uh, steering committees, as we heard earlier on there, coordination platforms involving various stakeholders, such as advisory services, research institutes, educational uh, institutions, farmer associations, and governmental partners. Uh, efforts are being made to establish coordination structures or bodies for ACUS, uh, such as ACUS follow-ups, uh, monitoring groups, ACUS committees, ACUS centres, and ACUS councils. Um, so uh, the next question was, how is the ACUS coordination body resourced? And uh, we saw earlier on the different levels of resources. I note the, the Finnish group have, have a well-resourced ACUS coordination team in place, and I suppose that reflects how serious it's been taken in, in that country. Um, how frequently are interactions foreseen in order to get the feedback on functioning uh, of the ACUS coordination? So the staffing and feedback mechanisms for ACUS coordination vary greatly across member states, and the coordination staff may be responsible for tasks such as innovation management, project coordination, communication, and financial control. Uh, limited resources and staffing pose challenges to ACUS coordination in many cases, 
Um, so I imagine that's a, a, an issue for many uh, different member states, is actually finding the resources or actually uh, securing funding to, to, to have those, those people in place. Some countries are exploring the use of digital platforms, so that was a very common theme across all of the responses, that uh, digital platforms are uh, very much a part of pr pretty much everybody's uh, plan. Annual seminars, ACUS assemblies to facilitate networking and feedback among stakeholders, and the coordination of ACUS may also involve participant or partnerships with universities, research institutes, and private civil society sectors. The translators are probably cursing me now for the speed in which I'm going through this, but uh, in the interest of time, I want to just make sure that we, we are covering, covering everything. So, um, question four, how does your ACUS coordination body plan to engage with the various ACUS actors? So, ACUS or coordination involves various methods, as we know, communication and collaboration, digital tools, physical meetings, workshops, conferences, and thematic group activities. These platforms and events aim to connect ACUS actors, share information, disseminate knowledge, and promote innovation partnerships. So I suppose the positive thing is that uh, what I'm saying here reflects what's already been uh, discussed this morning. So I think everybody is on the same page around those different um, uh, ways of engaging. Uh, the coordination of ACUS often involves the use of existing networks. And I think somebody made the point earlier on that we're not starting in a green field. I thought that was a good analogy. Uh, we are looking at the existing structures and it's really important to look at how can we best leverage those existing structures rather than trying to impose some new superstructure. Um, look at the, the positives and I'm sure that has all come through from the, the SWOT analysis that has been carried out. The coordination of ACUS often involves the use of existing networks, or, or uh, such as the, the, the CAP network. These networks serve as support units and facilitate the exchange of good practices, dissemination of information, and involvement of ACUS participants in regular meetings, workshops, and thematic information meetings are planned uh, across all member states to engage ACUS actors and to promote collaboration. Um, so the final, final slide uh, question that was asked was how will your ACUS coordination body capture feedback from existing networks and organization on the, the organization of knowledge and innovation actions? So, um, and thanks all for bearing with us with some of the complex questions. Uh, so utilizing net existing networks obviously was, was, came out very, very strong uh, and using platforms as well. So identifying what platforms are already in existence uh, such as uh, the CAP networks um, and uh, ACUS coordination bodies. Various methods are employed to gather feedback, including feedback questionnaires, one-to-one -one discussions, meetings, work, working groups, and evaluation of events. And continuous evaluation and feedback collection are essential components of ACUS coordination. I suppose finding systems and structures um, to, to do that easily uh, without creating a whole pile of paperwork uh, is probably something that we're all trying to achieve. Um, ACUS coordination bodies and networks play a crucial role in organizing activities, workshops, conferences, webinars, and knowledge reservoirs. And these platforms aim to involve and connect stakeholders, promote innovation, and support the dissemination of knowledge and results within the ACUS framework. So they were a, a very rough summary of, of, of what came through. Um, in the next presentations, I, I will be presenting um, the feedback in advance of each of the, uh, the breakout sessions. Um, and I will present some examples uh, later on, but uh, I think it's very good that these are reflecting uh, the discussions this morning. So I'll leave it at that and look forward to seeing you during the uh, breakout sessions. Thank you.